Here is one of the questions we frequently see on the test. Sydney is older than Rachel. Rachel and Beatrice are both older than Tina. Yelena is not the youngest. Who is the youngest? And you have four different choices. Choice A, Rachel. Choice B, Yelena. Choice C, Tina. And choice D, cannot say. Do you see the answer? Give yourself a little bit of time to see if you can come up with the solution. Ready or not, let's move forward and get to the correct solution together. To solve these types of challenges, you need to look at the facts as well as look at the common sense. There are five ladies referenced in this question. Sydney, Rachel, Beatrice, Tina and Elena. Sydney is older than Rachel. So obviously, Sydney is not the youngest. By the same logic, neither Rachel nor Beatrice are the youngest because Tina is younger than both of them. That leaves Tina and Yelena as the only two possible candidates. But the last sentence in the question mentions that Yelena is not the youngest. So based on this rationale, Tina is the youngest. So the correct choice here is choice C, Tina is the youngest. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to solve similar problems on the test. Here is the spelling question, which we frequently see on the test. You need to identify the word which is not spelled correctly. And you are presented with four different words. Choice A, hypothetically. Choice B, accommodation. Choice C, incomprehensibilities. And choice D, interdisciplinary. Do you see the answer? Give yourself a little bit of time so you can browse through words and see if you can come up with the correct solution. Ready or not, I am going to move forward and explain you the correct solution to this problem. As you must have figured out, the correct answer here is choice B. And the correct spelling for the word accommodation is A-C-C-O-M-M-O-D-A-T-I-O-N. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Here is the cool question that you frequently get on the test. Kate has $33, which is only 20% of the cost of shoes that she would like to purchase. How much do the shoes cost? And you are presented with four different choices. Choice A, $66. Choice B, $99. Choice C, $150. And choice D, $165. Can you calculate the answer? Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds, maybe 20 to 30 seconds, depending how well you are with math and percentages. Ready or not, let's go ahead and get to the correct solution together. The, an the answer to this problem is very simple. $33 is 20% or one-fifth of the shoe's price. So the total cost of the shoes would be 33 multiplied by 5, which would be equal $165. So the correct answer here is choice D, $165. Here's an interesting question you might easily get on the test. John's monthly spending is $1,500. 40% of his spending goes toward utilities and the amount that he spends on heating and electricity is 15% more than what he spends on utilities. How much does John spend on things besides heating, electricity and utilities? You are presented with four different choices. Choice A, $210. Choice B, $220. Choice C, $230. And choice D, $240. Do you see the answer? Give yourself a little bit of time to see if you can calculate the solution. The correct answer here is choice A, $210. Do you know how to get to this answer? If you figured it out, Please make sure to post your answer in the comment section of this video. Thanks for participating and good luck! Here is a sample of sequence question you might frequently get on the test. You need to determine what comes next in the sequence and you are presented with the series of numbers. The numbers are 7, 14, 42, 168, 840 and then comes the missing number. You need to select missing number from four different choices. Choice A, 4,980. Choice B, 5,000. Choice C, 5,020. 
and choice D, 5040. Do you see the answer? Give yourself a little bit of time because coming up with the answer might require you to do some calculations. Did you come up with the solution? Let's move forward and get to the correct solution together. As usual, my advice to you, always look for patterns. And in this case, the pattern is that the next number is calculated as multiplication of previous number and sequence ID. For example, first number in the sequence is 7, which is not calculated. But to calculate the next number, we need to multiply 7 and 2, and the result of this multiplication is 14. For the next number, we need to multiply 14 by 3, and the result of this calculation is 42. Next number calculated as 42 multiplied by 4, which results in 168. 168 multiplied by 5 equals to 840, which is the next number in the sequence. So to calculate missing number, we need to multiply 840 by 6, and the end result of this is 5040. So the correct choice here is answer D, 5040. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. I would like to ask you to participate in our daily assessment test challenge. I post new question every day in the community tab of YouTube channel and give you an opportunity to answer it and try it. And I post answer in comments next day. So please make sure to check it out to test your knowledge. And now let's continue and get you ready for the test. Here's a very interesting question you frequently see on the test. You're presented with three triangles. Each of the corners of each triangle has numbers. For example, first triangle has number 18 on the top, numbers 4 and 2 at the bottom, and number 3 in the middle. Second triangle has numbers 56, 6 and 1, and number 8 in the middle. Third triangle has number 104 on the top, number 8 in the middle, number 5 in the bottom left corner, and one missing number in the bottom right corner. You need to calculate the missing number. You have four different choices. Choice A, 7, choice B, 8, choice C, 9, and choice D, 10. Do you see the answer? Give yourself a little bit of time to make sure you can come up with the solution. Ready or not, I am going to move forward so we can solve this problem together. As usual, my advice to you, always look for patterns. And in this particular problem, the pattern is that the top number divided by the sum of the bottom two numbers is equal the middle number. Let's look at the example. For example, 18 divided in parentheses 4 plus 2 would be an equivalent of 18 divided by 6 and would result in 3. 56 divided by the sum of 6 and 1 would be an equivalent of 56 divided by 7 and would equal 8. Which means that we can build a formula. 104 divided by the value in parentheses 5 plus question mark equals 8. Which means that question mark equals 104 divided by 8 minus 5 which is an equivalent of 13 minus 5, which equals 8. So the correct choice here is choice B, 8. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Here's the cool question which tests your ability to quickly come up with the answers. The day after the day after tomorrow is four days before Monday. What day is it today? And you have four different choices. Choice A, Sunday. Choice B, Monday, choice C, Friday, and choice D, Saturday. Do you see the answer? Think again. These types of puzzles might require you to do some thinking. So feel free to pause this video to see if you can come up with the answer. Ready or not, I am going to move forward and get us to the correct solution together. To solve these types of problems, we need to analyze them and do them in reverse. Four days before Monday, is Thursday and the day before day before Thursday is Tuesday. If tomorrow is Tuesday, it means that today is Monday. So the correct answer here is choice B, Monday. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar puzzles on the test. A lot of you are interested and ask me how can I help others? One of the ways you can help other people is by sharing the latest questions you see as part of the assessment test. And when you share, please make sure to also include how you answered them. 
please share the question you recently encountered in the comment section of this video. And if you know the answers, please share them as well. And now let's continue and get you ready for the test. Here's the puzzling question that you might frequently see on the test. The sum of all the ages of four family members is 85. What would be the sum of their ages together in five years? And you're presented with four different choices. Choice A, 90. Choice B, 95. Choice C, 100. And choice D, 105. Do you see the answer? Give yourself 20 to 30 seconds to see if you can come up with the solution. Ready or not, I'm moving forward to get to the correct solution together. What's interesting about this problem is that it is simpler than you think. So the key here is not to overthink the problem. There are four family members and some of their ages is 85. And in five years, each family member will be five years older. So incremental age increase for all family members can be calculated as four, four family members multiplied by five, five years equals 20 years. So some of the ages of all family members in five years can be calculated as 85, which is original sum, plus 20, which is the incremental age increase and would be equal to 105. So the correct choice here is choice D, 105. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar puzzles on the test. And now here's the question for you to practice. You're presented with triangle which is broken down into three equal horizontal parts. On the left side of the triangle, you see numbers 8, 4, and 3 if you go from the bottom to the top. And on the right side of the triangles, you see numbers 2, 6, and one number is missing. You need to select missing number from four different choices. Choice A, 6. Choice B, 10. Choice C, 7. And choice D, 2. Give yourself a little bit of time to see if you can come up with the solution. If you figured out the solution, please make sure to post your answer in the comment section of this video so I can give you my feedback. Thanks for participating and good luck. I wanted to ask you for a favor. There are a lot of people that you might know that would benefit from this content. Would you be able to share this content with them? Unless of course you're driving, then you can do it right after you get off the car. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. And now let's continue and get you ready for the test. Here's a cool question you frequently see on the test. You need to calculate the question mark. And you're presented with the three layer pyramid. On the bottom layer, you have numbers eight and two. On the middle layer, you have numbers four and six. And in the top layer, you have numbers three. And on the other side of the pyramid, you have a question mark. And this question mark can be one of those four values. Your choice A is 6, choice B is 10, choice C is 7, and choice D is 2. Do you see the answer? Give yourself a little bit of time. For some of you, this type of question might be easy, but for some of you, it might require some thinking. So feel free to pause this video to see if you can come up with the solution. Ready or not, let's go ahead and get to the correct solution together. As you might have figured out, the key to solve these types of challenges is always look for patterns. And if you look closely, each row adds up to 10. And vertically, values also add up to 15. So the correct answer here is choice C, 7. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. And now I have a practice question for you. You need to determine which item comes next in the sequence. You're presented with three large squares. Each large square contains nine small squares inside. And small squares are of a different color. And the fourth square is missing. And you have four different choices to choose from. Choices A, B, C, and D. Do you see the answer? Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds to see if you can come up with the solution and make sure to post your solution and your rationale in the description section of this video. This way I can give you my feedback. Thanks for participating and good luck. Here's an interesting problem from the real test. You're presented with three full expressions. 18 by three equals 27. 
12 by 4 equals 12. 22 multiplied by 8 equals 32. And you need to calculate missing number in the expression 12 multiplied by 9. You have four different choices. Choice A, 34. Choice B, 36. Choice C, 38. And choice D, 40. Do you see the answer? Give yourself a little bit of time as the answer may not be obvious. But in the end, I'm pretty sure you will figure it out. I'm gonna give you a quick hint. Take a look and see why there are two digit number multiplied by one digit number. How can you make it work in your advantage? Let's go ahead, reveal the answer and get to the correct solution together. Even though mathematically our sample expressions are not correct, for example 18 by 3 is not equal 27. If you multiply each digit separately and add results together, you will get to the result you need. For example, 18 by 3 should be processed as 1 multiplied by 3 in parentheses plus 8 multiplied by 3 in parentheses, which would be equal 3 plus 24 and which would be equal to 27. In the similar way, 12 multiplied by 4 can be calculated as a result of 1 multiplied by 4 in parentheses plus 2 multiplied by 4 in parentheses would be equal 4 plus 8 and would be equal to 12. And in very similar way, 22 multiplied by 8 would be a result of 2 multiplied by 8 in parentheses plus 2 multiplied by 8 in parentheses, which would be 16 plus 16, which would be equal to 32. So to calculate the answer of 13 multiplied by 9, we would need to multiply 1 by 9 in parentheses and add to 3 by 9 in parentheses, which would be sum of 9 and 27, and the end result would be equal to 36. So the correct answer here is choice B, 36. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Here's the practice problem for you. The day after the day after tomorrow is four days before Monday. What day is it today? You have four different choices. Choice A, Sunday. Choice B, Monday. Choice C, Friday. Choice D, Saturday. Feel free to pause this video to see if you can come up with the solution. I would like to give you a hint. The best way to solve these types of problems is using reverse calculations. So do you see the answer? Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds to see if you can come up with the solution. Did you figure out the answer? Make sure to post your answer as well as your rationale for solving this problem in the comment section of this video. Thanks for participating and good luck. Here is a very interesting problem that you might frequently get on the test you need to determine the next item in the sequence. You're presented with the sequence of large squares. Each large square contains nine small squares inside, and small squares are of the different color. You need to determine next item in the sequence, and you have four different choices. Choices A, B, C, and D. Do you see the answer? Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds maybe longer, maybe 20 to 30 seconds to see if you can come up with the solution. Did you figure it out? Let's go ahead, move forward to get to the correct solution together. As always, my advice to you, look for patterns. And determining the pattern is key to solving this particular problem. What you need to know to answer this particular question is that blue shape moves within the row of the larger shape. In each row, blue shape moves from left to right, one step at a time. And once blue shape reaches the end of the row on the right, it reappears on the left. So the correct answer here is choice D. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Here's an interesting question we frequently see on the test. Kiara walks at the constant speed of five miles per hour. Olivia starts walking at the same time as Kiara, but starts four miles behind her and walks at a constant speed of eight miles per hour. How long will it take for Kiara to catch up with Olivia? You're presented with four different choices. Choice A, 50 minutes. Choice B, 60 minutes. Choice C, 70 minutes. And choice D, 80 minutes. Do you see the answer? Give yourself a little bit of time and think about all possible combinations. Ready or not, 
let's move forward and get to the correct solution together. One important consideration to help you solve this challenge is that the speed for both Kiara and Olivia is presented in miles per hour, but answers are in minutes, so at some point we would need to make a conversion. Another important point is that both Kiara and Olivia will walk the same time and we can put it as X in hours before catching up, because they started at the same time. In our solution, X will be the time in hours when they will catch up and meet. To solve this challenge, we need to build an equation. 5x plus 4 equals 8x. 8x represents how much Olivia will walk. And 5x plus 4 is representing how much Kiara can walk. And the starting point for this will be starting point of where Olivia starts. Since Olivia starts 4 miles behind. So if we simplify this equation, 4 will be equal to 3x. And x will be equal 4 thirds or 1 and 1 third of an hour. And now is the time to do the conversion. 1 hour equals 60 minutes. 60 multiplied by 4 thirds equals 60 plus 20 equals 80 minutes. So the correct answer here is choice D, 80 minutes. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Thanks for watching. If you like the content, please give us a like and consider subscribing. Thank you for your endorsement, support and patronage. Please also check out additional resources in the description section of this video. I also encourage you to check resources page on our website howtoanalyzedata.net. Please leave your feedback, corrections or suggestions in the comment section of this video. And all the best on your journey. I'll see you in my next video.